I'm sitting here at the IDW booth with Kava and Scott. I, I'm sorry. I just learned how to pronounce your name Kava. this morning. Kava? Kava. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. No, no. <laughs> and uh, he has a new book coming out, uh, Dead Seas, which comes out in December. He does, yeah. And um, he also is the writer, one of my other favorites, books is the Star Wars Adventures. Um, before we get into those, do uh, you remember, I like to ask uh, those I interviewed, do they remember maybe the first comic book that you read or the one that got you interested in? Yeah. So, so um, I'm from the UK. When I was growing up in the 70s and 80s, we had a big weekly comic scene, which was a lot of humor comics. There were scenes called the, the Beano and the Dandy and Nutty and Wizard and Chips, and they were all humor comics or like one or two page strips. Um, and there was basically a, a way of graduating up. So you sort of started on those and then you found 2000 AD or you found the Marvel UK reprints. And so things like Star Wars Weekly and the Transformers Weekly and Spider-Man Weekly. And it, it was a massive scene. Unfortunately, that scene really isn't there in the UK anymore. Um, it's, it's changed quite a lot. But yeah, that was, that was what, um, what, introduced me to comics and then from, from American comics it was the Marvel UK titles because they were very clever at pushing everything and um, I suppose the one that really opened my eyes was the Secret Wars, the original Secret Wars when I suddenly realised this was an entire universe of heroes that knew each other um, and from there it was a case I was hooked and so found my first comic store and then it's been no going back. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about Dead Seas, I mean um... What, what inspired it? You know, sure. Who were the characters and what's the, you know, the storyline? Sure. So uh, Dead Seas takes place in a universe where ectoplasm, the secretion of ghosts, has been um, discovered to have really good medical properties to humans. It's a bit of a miracle drug. But it's incredibly dangerous to um, harvest. So humans being humans um, get prisoners to go and do it um, to reduce their their sentence so they have these big floating prison ships full of contained ghosts and the prisoners are sent in to literally scrape the gunk off the walls um, and hopefully not go mad in the process now we've been describing it as the Poseidon adventure meets Halt in the Hill House so I'm a big disaster movie fan you know going back to yeah literally the Poseidon adventure Tower Inferno and those, you know, those kind of films watch them all the time um and in the true nature of those films, something very wrong that happens on the ship. So pirates attack, and the ship start, the ship start to, take, to take in water. And the trouble is, the more people who die as the ship goes down, it means there's more ghosts on board. <laughs> so it, they've really got a problem. And the prisoners are led by Gerz Altes, who's like the uh, main character, who is desperately there just so he can get his, his sentence reduced and he can see his kid, um, suddenly finds himself as a reluctant leader having to get everyone off the ship in the middle of... Um, some very, very dark waters. And so do you have a favorite character that, you know, you kind of maybe you enjoy writing more so than the others or the, uh, find, uh, no, find yourself identifying with? <laughs> um, well, I suppose, I mean, I'm a, I'm a dad, so, you know, Gus and his, his, his desire to see his kid is a big part of it. I think the character that came out of nowhere was um, Nick Brokenshire, who's the artist and the co-creator. When he was drawing the guards, the prison guards on the ship, drew one who... Um, basically had a quiff and looked like he was an Elvis impersonator. So <laughs> that's literally what he became. So he, we've got his, his name is, he's, he's Officer Russell, named after Kurt Russell, who obviously played Elvis in a very famous biopic. Um, and everyone calls him Elvis because he's obsessed with the king. Um, and he's just become the heart of the book. You know, he's the one where you have other officers, Officer Strickson, who's your very traditional, no nonsense, obviously, you, you know, he just wants the, the, convicts in there to do their job and getting them themselves. Um, Elvis is the one who tries to make sure that everyone's okay. Um, and that's before the ship starts to sink. So he has become a joy to write. Because also, yeah, he's a, a mad Elvis fan. And um, I, and so it's, it's been just a lot of fun to, to play with that and what that would mean in this kind of situation. Every good horror story needs some comic relief. And he's definitely the comic relief. But again, every good comic relief needs to break your heart at some point. And <laughs> Elvis will definitely do that. Now, is this a limited series or a ongoing or limited series with the possible of an ongoing? <laughs> um, it's a limited series of, of six issues and everything I write, I always try and think about what book two is just in case. So, um, yeah, there are ideas of how we can continue this, uh, but it, it, will definitely, it definitely tells a story, you know, a um, uh, 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 beginning, middle and end that will be satisfying. But hopefully there will be, you know, uncharted waters to explore afterwards.
Yeah. Or, let's shift gears to the Star Wars adventures be, um, because I, I love the books. And I believe you wrote like the Halloween specials, correct? Yeah, so I, um, I wrote, I've written the Halloween specials for since like 2018. So Tales from Vader's Castle and the, the Vader's Castle series. Now um, that part of the imprint has gone over to Dark Horse and we, we've got a new book out. It's actually out in November because Halloween in my mind, carries on all beyond, and there's been a shipping delay, which is appropriate for Dead Seas, um, which means that we're going to have to just increase the spooky season a few weeks yeah. into November. And we've got Tales from the Rancor Pit, which is basically a prisoner in, in Jabba's palace hanging upside down over the Rancor's pit and to buy himself time as he tries to work out how he's going to escape. He's trying to entertain Jabba with scary stories because Jabba loves to hear about people in pain. Uh, and so, yeah, it gives us a chance we've got um, ghost battle droids on the battlefields of the Clone Wars. We've got a character in my High Republic show um, series, Ty Yorick, uh, who's a monster hunter. We've got her hunting monsters on the um, and the frontier, Galactic Frontier. And we've got Luke Leia um, and Han, um, sorry, not Luke Leia, Han, Leia and Chewie on Hoth finding out what scares a Wampa. Um, so yeah, they're really fun stories. I mean, they are all ages, but they're definitely not just for kids. I mean, what I've loved about doing that series it's finding out the family's been reading these books now for years at Halloween and pull them back off the shelves, you know, and they've become real holiday favorites. So that's great. When I, I used to uh, write uh, lists for CBR and one of the topics that just kind of sat there was like Halloween stories or scary stories set in the Star Wars universe. I'm going, let me think about, oh, wait. <laughs> so I, you know, I really delved into the w different ones you wrote and it, it was, it was a, it was a fun uh, deep dive to do. And, um, when the Lego uh, Halloween special came out, I was like, a lot of these reminded me of the Star Wars adventure stories that you wrote. Yeah, I mean, the, the Lego special was influenced, was inspired by, by the Vader's castle. And at the end, it, you know, they, they acknowledge that in the credits. So it was great to sort of see that move across and become, again, another Halloween tradition now. People will be watching that every year. I'm a big horror fan. And people who read my other Star Wars material, especially for the High Republic, We'll see that coming through time and time again. I do, I, I do try and set myself out as the Star Wars horror guy. Um, and so, yeah, it's, again, and I like gateway horror stuff for kids. You know, I, I, I was introduced to horror through Doctor Who and Hammer Horror and, and Universal and, and, um, and then went straight into things like The Evil Dead. But, uh, you know, it's, I, I like those, those ways of getting kids interested in my favourite genre. Well, what I particularly liked is how you used uh, Vader's... Uh servant Benet, yeah, yeah, as kind of like the crypt keeper yeah. you know as the host of the stories <laughs> um so i know you're also doing some other stuff currently for other companies uh can you talk about that i mean you're doing the black adams stuff. yeah yeah so i've been writing the uh, black adam prequel books to the link it to the film and introduce the the jsa to uh, for the to the dc um movie universe the other thing I've been working on is Titans United, which is a book for DC. The fun thing about Titans United, it's, it was a book that the, the conception was they want to do a tie-in to the HBO show, but they didn't want to just do a, show, a comic about the show. So they, they thought, it's bringing out an entirely new group of fans into those characters who don't necessarily know the comic um, you know, equivalent. So it's a book that uses the same roster as the TV show, uses the same villain, but it's definitely set within the you know the, the comic world. So it's the Nightwing of the comics. For me personally, it's my chance to, to write a love letter to you know Wolfman and Perez. You know, and when they it was the first the first ever DC comic I ever read was um, DC Comics presents with um, Green Lantern Green Lantern versus Superman, and it was the one that had the prequel uh, the preview of, of New Teen Titans, and that was what made it was really hard to find DC in the UK. And I used to go out and seek out the new Teen Titans. So for me, it's a chance to, to write something that is a bit of a love letter. And this new series I'm writing now, where we've got out now, is where the Titans suddenly find themselves waking up in a world where, um, where Raven is a god and everyone worships her and Brother Blood is a high priest. And they, some of the Titans remember who they are. Some of the Titans have no idea of their life before. And so it's them trying to remember what it's like to be a Teen Titan, what it's like to remember to be Superboy and, and Starfire and, and Nightwing and Beast Boy um, and really examine who they are as characters and what their relationships are. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, do you want to kind of give like a 
quick uh, pitch for your uh, Dead Sea and uh, where, where people can find you. Yeah, sure. On so, the social media because... <laughs> that's where we all are. Uh, so you can find me on my website, which is www.cavernscott.com um, and on Twitter, Kevin Scott. Uh, Kevin Scott. Um, yeah, Dead Seas, I said, it's the side of adventure, meets Haunting of Hill House. It's, it's funny, it's scary, and it's got some amazing ghosts. So yeah, I hope you pick it up in December. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to chat about you know, your new book and stuff you've written in the past. And I really enjoy your work and look forward to reading uh, Dead Seas when it comes out. Thank you very much. We'll be in touch, and uh, you're welcome anytime to come on and talk to us about anything you want to. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much.